Hi, and welcome to Answers News for December 17th, 2018. So this year is almost done. Almost over. Almost it over. is. It's almost Christmas. Yep. We've been you know, there. I said to my wife last Christmas, what? what's the point of putting the Christmas tree and everything away? You're just going to take it out again soon. And it's true. We're doing it again. You know, that's the philosophy I have about making my bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to climb in at the next night. Yeah, so what's the point of making it? I have that philosophy it, you know? too. My, my yeah, wife yeah, yeah. doesn't agree with me. Means we've been doing answers news for almost two years now. Yeah. Two years. It seems impossible, but January will be. With you, it seems like millions. Yeah. No. Well, feelings <laughs> mutual. Are you going to welcome people? <laughs> huh? Are you going to welcome the people? <laughs> I'm going to if you'd be quiet oh, for a okay. minute. All right, so we have a wonderful studio audience with us today. So make yourselves known. Up there you are. Come on, there you go. There you are. Great. And uh, I'm going to be following the comments on my Facebook Live. Yep, I see them. I'm and on Answers in Genesis. You're on Answers in Genesis. And I am just going to bring it up here. Here it is. And yep. uh, oh, people are Working hopping on today. already. We love to hear people tell us where they're from. And uh, so there's already people jumping on here. And so Bodhi, wanted, normally we start off with a fluff article uh, just to get things going. And Bodhi chose the one for today. I don't know why, but there it is. There it is. Over in Germany, a German factory had a spill. And it happened to be a chocolate factory. So we ended up with a little chocolate river going out through the yard, down the street. And you were just jealous it wasn't in your street. I, you know, I would have loved this. You know, of all the things, I this know, would have been a seriously. good one. I would have been out taking pictures, maybe sampling. The yeah. good thing was it happened in Germany and not America, because in America, everyone's addicted to chocolate. Oh, I know. <laughs> They'd have been out there, melt over, there, licking there would, it. There'd be nothing left. Uh. Yeah. Well, it would clean it up, at least. Yeah. So. They're addicted to chocolate and sugar in well, America. Well, I guess the firefighters showed up like, well, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> Spray it with water? What do you do? Uh, but, I uh, don't know how you... I don't know how you... I guess you wait till it dries and you just, like, that, That's kind of what they up. did. Yeah. They, they, they called it or, a big chocolate pancake. Or you just bring a <laughs> plain load of Americans over and they'll clean it up. <laughs> you know, they probably would. That's probably what they did. Well, I guess the, the factory owners are like, you know, if this had happened to them closer to Christmas, it would have been a disaster. Cause yeah. The, you know, it, but but they said because it happened early enough, they'll have it repaired. They'll, still have, it. they'll oh, have more gosh. chocolate to get out there for Christmas time. That's so, crazy. Hey, um, hey, we've got a lot of people jumping on here yeah. from all over, from lots of different states. Washington, uh, Illinois, and uh, someone from Australia yeah. just jumped on. It looks yeah. like Terry from Australia mm -hmm. uh, just jumped on. Well, I Bodhi chose the fluff article, and I chose the first article. Fair enough. It's okay. all about chicken bones. Chicken bones. Yeah, chicken bones. Okay. You want to explain it? Yeah. When humans are wiped from Earth, the chicken bones will remain. So um, basically they're saying when humans are gone off this planet, like what will, you know, what would be left? And apparently because we eat so many chickens today, um, and that seems to be, the article seems to indicate that's our main, like one of our main meat sources, that there will be all these chicken bones left as a result of our massive intake of chickens. So I always wondered, you know, what are the mosquitoes thinking? They're probably like, well, you know what, when we're all gone, there's going to be nothing but human bones because the mosquitoes feast on us all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, well, the, the, the first part of the article cool. says, when humans have vanished from the planet, yeah. what, what kind of hope is there? I mean, yeah. Absolutely if no we're hope. just going to die, what's the point? Who cares about anything ultimately? Who cares what's left? And, and they talk about the fact that, of course, just about every article these days, climate change. Well, they got when humans, that. because they didn't deal with climate change, vanish, all that's going to be left are chicken bones. Millions of chicken bones. Right. Well, I got news for them. The Bible says the climate change that we should be really worried about mm -hmm. is the one that's coming in the future because by the same word that created the heavens and the earth that now exist stored up for fire being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly but the day of the lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done and it will be exposed that's the climate change we really need to be worried about <laughs> yeah. i've got news for you that hasn't happened yet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that climate change is coming and it is caused by man because we sinned against the holy god right. it is, yeah. and, and there won't uh, be chicken bones or anything left no the chicken <laughs> bones will be all actually yeah. you know what i don't even like chicken my wife I knows either. see i have this phrase chickeny chicken do you know what i mean by chickeny chicken when chicken tastes like chicken you know when it was what well, else my, would it taste like? 
But, See, I, I know yeah. what you mean. It, yeah, it, it, it's it, like chicken when it starts to go bad. It's like when you go to the hotels and they serve you these chicken in meals, and it's sort of, they got this dead chicken. And it's been Let's heated up so. They just time put it in an life. oven, and then they put it on your plate, and it, it looks dead, it smells dead. When you eat it, it tastes dead. Well, <laughs> Have you noticed that? You know what as I mean. Opposed to, as opposed to tasting live chicken? I mean, what no, is no, that? No, no, no but they could flavor it. Well, you know, in Australia, they call them chook. Yeah, I know. Chook. Let's yeah. go have some chook. Like chook, chook, chook. You know? well, Australians always got to change it up. They name always have to change it up just a so, little bit. But, but see, I, I don't, my wife knows for me to eat chicken, it's got to be flavored so that it doesn't taste like chicken. Like flavor it like beef. Uh, teriyaki chicken with an emphasis on teriyaki. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Teriyaki oh, chook. I heard, and I, I heard that um, a major um, food chain, KFC, is actually selling logs that when you burn them in the fireplace, it smells like fried chicken. Oh, that would be disgusting. <laughs> so, that would be awful. I, I saw There should that. be a law against so, that. So I guess. But, but you know what? Here's the point. The point is, there, man, humans aren't going to vanish from the earth except when God takes us all and there'll be Definitely. a new heavens and a new earth. So in the future, all the chicken bones are going to be gone anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I have a message for these evolutionists. That's Eat my message chicken. for the evolutionists. There you Eat go. Yeah. 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 And, and, and they're, they're worried about the fact that we're fattening up all these chickens. Do you, know how many, do you know how many chickens are slaughtered each year, they say? 60 billion chickens slaughtered each year. Okay. They're worried about 60 billion chickens slaughtered each year, but they don't seem to talk about all the children killed by abortion each year. No, no I know. Well, you they notice that? that? Yeah, that's a pretty, oh, yeah. pretty sad part of it all. And they try to blame climate change and uh, all the rest of it. And I think the evolutionists need to stop talking foul. Oh. Oh. Well, see, people on. See, see, Bodhi we, usually we need comes to up. We scratch this conversation. Bodhi usually <laughs> comes up with, with the puns. And right. I don't, I'm just, no, we need I don't to, do we that. We need to fly to the next one. Do chickens fly? They are birds. <laughs> Somebody says you're on a roll today, yeah. Ken. Uh-oh, so, uh-oh. And that you're intelligent. I'm not sure where they're getting that from, but okay. <laughs> um, children abusing children. Children's Mercy sees, it's a hospital, sees dangerous trend involving children and porn. And so this is in Kansas City, Missouri. And what this hospital has observed is that um, most of the perpetrators of um, this sexual assault cases are minors. Half of the perpetrators are between the ages of 11 and 15. And, and, and they say there's a lot of physical violence from ages 11 to 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when you start to think about children that young yeah. committing all sorts of horrible acts and violence, and it says in this article, how are we as a society failing in such a way that this has happened? Bodhi, have you got an answer for him? Well, yeah, I mean, this is the fruit of a secular worldview. When you reject God and you throw out God and, and his basis for morality, why would you expect anything else? I mean, I, I sit back and I look at this and I say, okay, in a secular worldview, there's no God who sets what's right and wrong. Do whatever you want. Yeah. And, and, and yet people get so upset with the fact that all these people are no longer following Christian morality. And they're like, well, what's wrong? Well, yeah. that's exactly what's wrong. Yeah. yeah, when you take generations of kids and tell them there's no God, the Bible's not true, then there's no basis in absolute authority. Yeah. And as I've said over and over again, quoting Judges 21, 25, mm -hmm. when there's no king to tell them what to do. No absolute authority. Everyone does what is right in their own eyes. Why should we be surprised? And, yeah. and they said too, you know, they talk about pornography and a lot of young kids being exposed to pornography and that playing a role then in how they acted out essentially. And it's very violent pornography. And they said, you know, what's the line between child curiosity and a real problem? Is there a line at all? And I'm like, well, obviously <laughs> yeah. we've crossed that line too much. And that's mm -hmm. why we have the problem that we have. But, mm -hmm. you know, I thought when I read that, I thought about Philippians Philippians 4, 8, you know, right? You're supposed to put in your mind the things that are good and what comes out then yeah. should be good. If you put in what's bad, this is the, this is the outcome. This is what you should expect. And it's probably yeah. only going to be on the and, and plus, they, there's no understanding or recognition that children are sinful. Right. Just like everyone is sinful. And yet you go back we have to a Genesis sinful heart. We're not neutral. Yeah. Genesis 8.21 says the intent of uh, man's heart is evil even from their youth. Yeah. Yeah, Romans yeah. 3.23. For and all if we sin, don't understand all that and then understand what the Bible says about how to train children and how to deal with that, then that's what we end up with. Generations that rebel against him. Mm -hmm. Think about what happened before the flood. 
-hmm. You know, everyone had rebelled except Noah and his right. family. That's, yeah. what, that's where we're heading if we keep going the way we are. Well, and they want to fix it too. They talk about, oh, there's these behavioral therapy models, you know, that they're going to try to help the kids change their behavior. But just changing the outside and changing what they do isn't any change at all, right? It has to, it has come, to come from a heart, a heart change. change and a mind change and, and yeah. realize that this is a sin problem, not just a behavior the, the, problem. The change that will, um, will be the only change that's needed for them is to understand and believe God's word Mm -hmm. and to respond to the gospel. Right, repent of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Turn to the Lord. And that's why we need to be yeah. training up our children, as the scripture says, to train and them we're up gonna be, in the things we, of the Lord. we uh, have the women's conference this year, Answers for Women, April 5th and 6th, we're going to be talking about this very topic of pornography um, and how it affects not just adults, but youth as well. And so I encourage you to check out more about that at answersforwomen.org. We'll put the information up there. So, I don't know, Bodie, someone here, I don't know if they're complaining or not, but because I used a pun, they seem to think I was copying you or something. <laughs> All right. Because Bodie is usually, usually the pun king on uh, Answers News. <laughs> We have people from South Africa on here, so from all over yeah, the world. Yeah, okay. All right, Irish lawmakers vote to allow abortion, part of landmark liberal shift. So um, several months ago, um, we saw that the voters there repealed in Ireland a constitutional ban on abortion. So it was actually part of their constitution in Ireland. And now the lawmakers have basically um, passed the bill that says that every citizen basically of Ireland it can have, every woman citizen, have a free and legal abortion um, in the country. So it's now become official. So it shows that the Constitution really is irrelevant. Yeah. I mean, I hate to put it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, it really that comes down to people's to worldview. Their worldview has changed, and yep. so therefore throughout the Constitution right. and what it said. Yep. And that's what we've got to understand. Mm -hmm. It's happening in America as well. It doesn't matter what yeah. the Founding Fathers meant by what's in the Constitution. It's going to be interpreted by people uh, who have particular worldviews, and if they have an anti-Christian worldview, they will reinterpret it. Well, here's the thing. From a big picture, you start with the Bible. God is the ultimate lawgiver. We have a basis for law when you start with God and His Word. But as soon as you reject God and His Word, law can be anything you want it to be. You can change it at any moment, at any time, yeah. for any situation, and yeah, and that's that's the culture we're starting to live in. And we're seeing it in Ireland here. And it's only, and, and right now at least, it's legal up until the twelfth week for any reason of pregnancy, and in the case of a fatal um, fetal abnormality or serious risk to a woman's life or health. And so this is, I mean, that in essence is eugenics. I mean, if if you're getting rid of children because they have some kind of defect. Um, and, and what's interesting is I've studied eugenics a lot, and in Ireland, eugenics back in the late, 18, or late 1800s, early 1900s, was pretty much a, didn't happen there. Um, it happened a lot in other parts of Europe and in America, but it didn't happen here because of what? The influence of the Catholic Church that kept it at bay. But what's happened now? You got all this scandal in the Catholic Church, and so people no longer mm -hmm. see the church or even God or the Bible as a, as a right. source of authority. And even though we see scandals in the secular world, they, they just dismiss that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what? Mm -hmm. And they just follow after it anyway. Actually, Dr. Pert and I were just over in Ireland, and we had a tremendous conference, yeah. and a lot of pastors who came who Good. said, now because of what's happened in Ireland and just the bankruptcy of Catholicism right. because, because of what happened there, uh, that there, there's a church that's emerging, but it's in its infancy now to rebuild in that mm -hmm. sense. You know, it just breaks my heart to see, you know, the abortion, not just in Ireland, uh, now, but uh, right. all over the place. You know, um, th there's a simple fact. Every growing baby in the womb is choosing to live. Right. And they're an image bearer. They're made and in they the image of God, image and God. they have a and, right And remember life. this. When they say, oh, because of abnormality, they can have an abortion, which, who decides what the abnormality is? Like, right. for instance, in Iceland, uh, yeah. they, they have aborted every baby with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and... Yeah, you know, who, who makes that decision? It's man trying to be his own God. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, another thing it has in here is healthcare providers are, are basically forced to refer someone to someone who will perform the abortion. They can't you, conscientiously you, 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 object. Yeah, you can't even object to it. Yeah. How so sad that, is that? And, and even the people that are for abortion are saying, well, this doesn't go far enough. 
they said it should be for any reason at any time, basically during the pregnancy. There it, shouldn't be any limits, no waiting periods, no mm -hmm. nothing. They, again, it's never enough until it's total, total mm -hmm. acceptance and promotion of and it. And you know, we have a number of young people in the audience, a number of young people watching. I just want to make the point, it doesn't matter whether it's the abortion issue, the LGBT issues, gay marriage issue, yeah. uh, or, or whatever it is, the gender issue that's going on right now. They're all the same issue. When you don't have an absolute authority, then who decides right and wrong? Right. Who decides good and bad? When you don't have an absolute mm -hmm. authority, anything goes. In fact, yeah. there are no lines. Right. There are. Yeah. Right? How do you and, decide right and wrong? And how do you decide right mm -hmm. and wrong? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is child sacrifice, and essentially Ireland just passed a law to declare war on their own children. Yep, yeah. it's, it's people sacrificing children to the God of self. sadly, many other countries have already done it, yeah, including our exactly. own. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Bodhi, someone said here they want you to use at least three puns today. Three yes. puns. Yeah, can you use three puns? All right, well, this next one comes from Fox News. That's Foxy. Uh, okay. That's not real good. That wasn't a good one. 180 million year old sea monster found with skin and blubber. So this is a fossil of an ichthyosaur. Stop blubbering on. Oh, uh, there we are. There's two. Uh, okay. okay. Which more. is an extinct sea creature. Um, and they say now that they found the blubber, um, they think it's maybe more, more similar to modern day uh, dolphins. And so, uh, but what's amazing about this particular find is the exquisite preservation of even layers, cellular layers of the skin so that they can see cellular construction basically right. of this of this organism yeah they're amazed by that and here's the interesting thing more and more and more they're finding soft tissue in the fossil record mm -hmm. now you know a number of years ago they would have said that's impossible you know yep. the fossils are millions of years old there's no soft tissue but now we find it all the time now they're, they're like, finding oh. it more it's, it's becoming a common a common occurrence to find soft mm -hmm. tissue and yeah. of course in dinosaur bones they found Blood cells, blood vessels, cells, proteins, yeah. all, um, sorts all of that. Things. And that's only possible if it's fairly young. And they, these types of structures, speaking as a cellular and molecular biologist, cannot last for millions of years. There's just no way under non pristine conditions, it just can't happen. Oh, yeah. So, how could that be millions of years old? Yeah. They well, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by an ichthyosaur. Um, an ichthyosaur, I ichthyosaur literally means fish lizard. That's, that's, that's where the name comes from. And, mm -hmm. You know, I've looked up the history of where that name came from and, you know, why they uh, designate this as a reptile. And really, th there's no real evidence for why this thing is considered a reptile. It doesn't have scales, does it? It it's, doesn't have scales. Scale and we've actually got skin imprints of it. Um, and it's young, it, it's younger born it, life. It's, it's younger born Because they've actually got fossils of Yeah, life. of one of these actually in the process of, of giving, giving birth. birth. That's, that's how fast yeah. it was buried. Um, it's that, was a long, that was a long birth, that one. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> Millions of years. Um, but, I mean, this creature looks very similar to a dolphin. Now, it's not a dolphin. It does have anatomical differences. And there are variations in these. It might right. be part of their own kind. But, you know, the more that I look at this, the more that they study this, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this, this could probably be in, the, be in the category of a mammal. Right. But it, it's just persisted that they call yeah. it a, a reptile for no, no apparent reason that I can find mm. anyway. But. Hey, th here's a really good comment. I think it's important for us to, to listen to this one. Our kids need to know what is going on in an age-appropriate way. My 11-year-old watches these with me and have amazing discussions. She becomes more grounded in God's word, so she processes this info. So yeah. thankful to you all. I know we deal with some pretty uh, horrible issues that we are going on in our culture, but yeah. you know what? Our kids, kids of a young age are being inundated with this stuff. And uh, we need to, to deal with it, with it and, with them, and to help parents yeah. be able to talk with them because right. they're going to hear it. They're going to see it one way or another. And, um, you know, at, at ages today, at 10 years old, 9, 8, I would never, when I grew up, heard oh, about mm -hmm. these issues, but kids hear them all the time now. Well, well, consider, you know, that article we just had just a moment ago, yeah. um, you know, with the, with the child sex abuse, mm -hmm. do you realize a lot of the victims were 4 to 8 year old girls? Yeah. So, I mean, if we can at least start training kids to be on, to put out some discerning factors, you know, when they're around certain people, that right. might help them out, actually. Yeah, yeah. We need so. to... They're smarter than we give them credit for, I think, yeah. a lot of times. Kids are, and we need to help them with that. Have a good yeah. biblical worldview. All right, we've added letters to the genetic code, and the results are amazing. All right, so as a geneticist, that's why I, I'm a geneticist, so that's why I picked this article. Um, but that, mean, that means she studies genetics. And it's really long. <laughs> you made us read this really long. <laughs> well, so the genetic code, DNA, has four bases, okay, A, C, T, and G. And... Um, 
what they've done is they basically have made a new set of bases, uh, so they have a new pair, and now it can do, basically, they've added that to the code, so it can add different amino acids, ones that aren't found in nature, and make different things, which is really so cool. Good industrial They uses. took the system God invented, yep. and they try, try, used it in, in a particular way. Right. Yeah. And but just try to. They're not inventing a whole new system. Like right. DNA, no. the molecule of heredity, mm -hmm. no one's ever invented that except no. God. Well, they, yeah. So they're just tweaking, kind of tweaking what God mm -hmm. has already designed. I, I think of it as part of the dominion mandate, you know, doing, taking what, something that's mm -hmm. already there and using it for our betterment and our good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's a yeah. good thing. But, but what amazed me throughout the article and what we all kind of honed in on was, the, the, per, the researcher said, when you look at DNA, what you see is Im imperfection, mm -hmm. right? And they, they, say, they say it's a hopeless design in here. Yeah, the yeah. molecule at its heart doesn't impress the scientist. And I'm thinking, but nothing in your research shows why it shouldn't <laughs> or so why it wouldn't. Let me get this wrong. DNA, this, this scientist is saying DNA, DNA is badly designed mm -hmm. yeah. and it's imperfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They thought they could do better. They thought they could do better, so yeah. they took God's DNA mm -hmm. and did something with it to make things. They add, yeah. But look at all the different they types really of life we have on Earth built on DNA. Yeah. Yep. They've never been able to do anything like that. You know what it reminds me of? You know, when I went to university, I remember one of the professors saying, look at the kidney. Look how badly designed the kidney is. I could design a better kidney than that. You did know he, what my answer was? Did you ever design a better kidney? Well, do you know what my answer was? <laughs> Man has designed a kidney. Why don't you get yours removed and go on it? Yeah. Do you want to be on dialysis 24 hours a day? Yeah. Because that's man's kidney. Yeah. Right? Think about that. Yeah. There's no way man has designed anything that comes near to what yeah. God has done. Or yeah. what, what about that argument, Bodhi, you often hear about the eye? You yeah, know what oh, the yeah. evolutionists say? Yeah, I mean, they, they say, well, the eye is poorly designed. It's terrible. We could do such a better job. And yet our eye is designed so well we can detect a single photon. Yeah. And I mean, our eyes are fascinating. I mean, look at the eye, you know, various creatures. They're designed to do what they, they do. Well, and, and think of the arrogance of man. The arrogance of man mm -hmm. who thinks, I can do better than that. Well, and even, he doesn't even understand Well, they it. say that. We thought we could do better. Well, and they say, well, I don't understand why. So when the DNA, um, when the bases bond to each other, it's through hydrogen bonds. Mm -hmm. And hydrogen bonds are a fairly weak bonds, which is a good thing because they're easy to break. And you actually want that so you can replicate DNA. Right. And so you, what we call transcribe DNA to make protein. But this guy's like, oh, it'd be better if they had covalent bonds. Much which stronger bonds. Are strong bonds. You know how much energy you're going to have to have to break that every Every time you want to replicate a cell or make something, you'd have to eat more chicken to get up enough energy yeah. to be able to. Oh, and I'm just yeah. Like, and then there'd be more what? chicken bones. There'd be more yeah. chicken bones. <laughs> yeah. Oh so my then I the just, evolutionists would be really upset. Yeah, I, I just I read this and I think his research shows nothing about what he's saying about how well this is poorly designed. But you yeah. use the same system that it was and just added something to it. So, so what, are, what did they system. say they're actually making? What are these new things they're making? Well, right now, all they've actually been successful in is making a protein that fluoresces, which we already have those naturally. Um, you don't have to use a, a different system to do that. But they're hoping to do things like attach um, a kind of magnetic, um, maybe amino acids or things that have magnetic properties to it so you can pull it out easier. And th so there's yeah, different... Give you more of a magnetic personality. Uh. So there it is, number there three. Is. There we are. So you, you did it, Bodie. They want to make different medicines with it, possibly speed other chemical reactions mm -hmm. up. So there's things that they can do with it, but it has nothing to do with it being poorly mm -hmm. designed in the first place. Right. Hey, somebody said here, my son is deaf and his hearing aids are far less accurate than a regular ear. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Church of England to offer baptism-style services to transgender people to celebrate their new identity for the first time. So again, this is the, the Church of England, and these are baptism-style ceremonies. They're not actual baptism. So if they're for people that are already in the Church um, of England, but have under, are now transgender. They've decided, right. they've decided, a girl who decided she's going to become a man or a man who decides she's going to become a girl, right? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So now they can have a ceremony, basically, by the Church of England to, I guess, affirm that. 
Well, they talk about getting your new yeah. name. So instead of Jack, you become Jill. Or instead of Jill, you become Jack. And then they say, one of the things you could do at this ceremony is to give them a Bible inscribed with their new name, chosen name. You know what I call that? Desecrating a Bible. Yeah. You know? Actually, yeah. you, know, you know what their new... I, we, we should, the real name that should be put in the front is Sinner. Mm -hmm. That's the real name. Because... Yeah. Because that's what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, God makes it very clear. Genesis 1, 27. He made male and female. Right. right? Now, it is true that sin has affected right. our genes. Sin affects our bodies in all sorts of ways. In a lot of different ways. Yeah. But, but, and, and that means there are some people that can have right. issues with, in, in, in regard to... But we don't argue from the abnormal or right. what is... Or the exception. Right, or right. the exceptions. We don't argue from that point. Mm -hmm. it's, it's clear how God made that he made man and woman. But, but this is telling you the basic problem in the church today. They're changing what God's word says in response to culture... Right. Instead of standing on God's word to preach the truth to the culture, because yeah. the culture needs to change. Yeah, they're letting to the world with... influence them instead right. of them influencing the world. You know, it's a problem you see all the way through scripture. You know, and, and the Israelites had that problem. They would change God's word to fit where the culture was instead of the other way around. You know, they, they want to conform the Bible to where the culture's at instead of people need to conform uh, their behavior right. to what God's word says. Right. That's the bottom line. And I want to encourage people to be praying for the Church of England. You know, in the past, they've opened the door to evolution and naturalism, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which are uh, opposing religions. You know, that's geological right. evolution, biological evolution, astronomical evolution. Um, you know, they've got mixed feelings about abortion. You know, they say, well, we don't like it, but, you know, it's okay. Um, you know, they, they've promoted uh, homosexuality and a lot of different things. And, you know, I mean, you, you just see the continued trend here. Right. When are they going to get back to the Bible? Well, you know, you know what we, as, as we say in Australia or England, the, pr the proof's in the pudding. Okay. So <laughs> has all of this compromise in the church, has it worked to reach people with the gospel? Have a look in England. The Church of England has compromised God's word in Genesis, compromised in regard to marriage, they support yeah. gay marriage, compromised in regard to gender, compromised in regard to abortion. Before, at the end of the last war, 50% of people in England went to church. Do you know right now, it's down around 4%. So what has happened? Has the church impacted the culture? No. no. The culture impacted the church and the church gave in. Well, the church looks just like the world. So they're not making themselves unique right. at all. Why would you want to be a member of that? It's no different than the rest of the world. Yeah. So that's the problem. Yeah. Somebody on here says, sounds like we need to invest more in chicken stock than in hydrogen bonds. Mm. That's pretty good. What do you think? That's a good pun. There we go. There you go. I'll all take right. that one. Now, somebody well here said, seeking to make evil good and change good is evil. I mean, that's what you read in scripture. Uh, yeah. People who, want, who call evil good and they call good evil. That's happening in our culture. We are growing up in a culture where we're seeing that right before our very eyes. We're seeing catastrophic change because we have the younger generations yeah. who have been grounded in secular philosophy and that they decide truth for themselves. Mm -hmm. All right, City switches off Grandma's mic while reading Christmas story at Christ Child Market. So this is in Ontario and Kitchener, um, if I'm saying that right, um, Ontario. And they have their annual German Christ Kindle or Christ Child Market. And so this church, which has been there before, was reading um, a Christmas, the Christmas account from Scripture. And they turned off, one woman was, and they turned off her mic. And then the and preacher... And they cr cranked elevator music too. Yeah. So that people wouldn't hear her still speaking. Yeah. And, a, and then a preacher got up to talk a little bit about why we celebrate the season, and they also turned off his mic as well and wouldn't let him speak. You can imagine, they're, they're, they're really people who are putting their hands over their ears and saying, I refuse to hear this, yeah. I don't want anyone else to hear it, because they know there's a God. Right. The yeah. scripture makes it clear in Romans yeah. 1, we all know, Romans 2, we have a conscience. Yeah, well, the, the title of it's Christ Kindle, uh, Christ mm -hmm. Child is what that right. means. That, that's actually a, uh, where Chris Kringle comes from, if you guys have ever heard that term. That's actually uh, a, a corruption, really, of uh, Christ Kindle here, uh, the German name. And there's that title right there. Right. Uh, the whole purpose is for the Christ child. Exactly. And they, they don't even want anybody to know about it. Yeah. It's and the city shocking. even claims, well, you know, we've never had scripture as part of our thing. But yet this church did it the year the before. The year before. <laughs> So, and, and the preacher, new. the pastor, though, yeah. uh, that was of this church that tried to do this, said the spirit of Herod is always with us. And I thought, mm. boy, and that, isn't that the truth? 
Mm -hmm. Hey, what was the name of that song they sing Christmas sometimes? Grandma got run over. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. reindeer. I got a new one. I got a new one. Granda, grandma had her mic switched off for Christmas. There you go. How about that? I can add a verse. I mean, that's how. I'm sorry, people. I apologize. (laughs) Okay. No. Yeah. This All is right. just All right. one, one <laughs> well, how about the people silence in the Should we do that song for the next one? Santa Claus is coming <laughs> to town? No. You can, yeah, there we go. Okay, so oh. the question is, what gender is Santa? So gender neutral the, Santa. This gender issue is driving the whole culture. Survey it's says ridiculous. Saint Nick is ready for rebranding. So basically they said, how would you upgrade Santa, you know, if he was to have a new image? Well, of course, you're going to have Santa in uh, gender neutral or a female and wearing skinny jeans. Okay. Now, that would ruin Santa. Well, yeah, kind of, yeah. Plus, he wouldn't so be able to fit lady. into his skinny jeans. <laughs> oh, that, no, this is the rebranded Santa. This is, yeah. yeah. They said he should be on a diet and wear skinny jeans. I suggest a diet first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, their skinny but, jeans aren't going to be fun. No, no. 20%, but they wanted a tattooed Santa. Yeah, 20% said yeah. he should be tattooed. He or, he or she or it, whatever it is. He should wear boots and trainers. Should he use should... Amazon Prime. I like that one. <laughs> I think that's a good one. Oh, so, you know, and it just shows you, they can't leave anything alone, right, right, with these gender issues. It has to permeate, just like global warming. It seems like it has to permeate everything. Uh, yeah. And my... Uh, Mm. Okay. There's just no words for that. Like, you know, <laughs> there's just no words. Like, seriously. Okay. Well, 72% said Santa should be a man. So it's still well, you know, above 50 right now. Sa- Santa Claus is actually a corruption of uh, St. Nicholas. Mm-hmm. So that's where that actually comes from. It's just kind of a corruption of all that. St. Nicholas was a real guy. He was a great guy. Uh, <laughs> lived, what, about 300? Hey, did, if that's I remember your... right, he was the Bishop of Myra. And he was a wealthy person. He gave gifts and helped pay people's debts to keep them out of prostitution and all sorts of different things. And he was a wonderful guy. And it's, it's sad, you know, it's sad to see this guy has just been corrupted into what mm-hmm. people call Santa Claus today. And they want to put tattoos and skinny jeans on him. Do you know what? We taught our children and we teach our grandchildren, which Bodhi has four of them, mm-hmm. about someone who knows everything, knows where you are, knows what you do, and and uh, he really is the keeper of can, the naughty and nice can, list. Can find <laughs> can find you at any time, yeah. and has the greatest gift of all for you, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's right. So we we don't tell our kids about a fictional being who's everywhere and knows what you do and when you're naughty and when you're nice. We tell them about the one who is everywhere, right. Right. who knows what you do, yeah. and has gifts for you. Has the greatest gift of all that he stepped into history to be the babe in a manger. That's what the Christmas message is all about. To die on a cross, be raised from the dead, and offers that free gift of salvation. That is the greatest gift yeah. of all. And that's the message of Christmas. And that's what yeah. we need to be telling our children. Right. Absolutely. Amen. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, well we're, we're out, out of time. time for today. So we will be back on Thursday. Well, some of us won't be. Um, back on yeah, Thursday. I won't be here Thursday. So. I won't be here either. So. It's you and Brian. Fun. I will be here. I'll be I'm here on, on Thursday. <laughs> and Brian will be here. You should line yeah. up oh, with a whole bunch of genetics and articles. Thursday, the first article we're going to start with is mm-hmm. there is a very interesting article. Yes, it is. It, uh, it relates to See. something that's going to happen in this area next, next April. Spring. And relates to uh, atheists. And they have a convention, but there's some interesting things going yeah. on. So right. we're going to talk about that. Well, actually, we have a convention next Easter, yep. and we're running it at our new answer center down at yep. the Ark, an Easter convention, an Easter conference, and Ray Comfort's coming out for it, yeah. and a number it's of other exciting. speakers. It's right. going to be absolutely yeah. fantastic. Well, you know, we point out a lot of logical fallacies when we deal with the news, and this is a book on logical fallacies simply entitled Discerning Truth, and uh, it's a powerful little book. It's an easy-to-read book, takes you through various logical fallacies, and shows you how to be able to spot them. Um, you know, we spot these things all the time. Sometimes we don't even get a chance to talk about all the ones yeah. that we find in the article. And Dr. Lyle right will be at the Answering Atheist Conference He will conference be at that well. same conference. So, yep. Yeah, Dr. Jason Lyle will be there. So come back yep. on Thursday at 2 o'clock, and you might be very interested to hear what the atheists are going to do. All right. We'll all right. see you then. All right. God bless.